This is a 2009 Chevy Uplander. I bought it with 171,000 kilometers on it. It had two owners before me and it was very well maintained. It was rust proofed and it never had any accidents. And it also came with a set of winter tires. I paid 3,900 Canadian and I feel like I got a pretty good deal on it. So I made my window coverings out of foam board that I got at Walmart and I just cut it to match the shape of the window. Then on the inside I used this decorative fabric and I wrapped it around and taped it to the back side of the foam board. And then I used this black fabric on the outside face and I used a sewing machine to attach that. Then I trimmed off all the excess to match, match the shape. And it just snaps nicely into place. From the outside, it just looks like limo tint. So I lined the floor with a roll of vinyl that I got for 35 bucks. But the problem with this vehicle is, with the seat mounts and all that, there's a lot of ups and downs and dips and curves, so it doesn't sit very flat on there. I guess I could have put down a sheet of plywood first, but the headroom is already pretty limited in here. My bed doubles as a storage trunk. I keep my clothes and other things in here. And I just recently upgraded to three inch thick foam, very comfortable. And I use this nice durable upholstery fabric. And all this Velcro is right to the top of the bed. This is the foot panel and they both have Velcro seams on the edge so I can take the foam out and wash them when needed. The foot panel slides out like this and latches into the back of the seat. And I put down the box cushion. Got my pillow. My enlightened equipment down quilt. This is rated to zero degrees Fahrenheit. So very quickly I'm ready to go to bed. And if it's a chillier night, I also have an SOL Escape Bivy Pro. This is supposed to add another 10 degrees of warmth. It's a thermal liner. Down in this cubby is where I keep my dirty laundry in this bag. And there's also a 12 volt socket there. That's a USB port and it's wired over to three more 12 volt sockets. It's hard to see, but there's also a power inverter there. So I can plug my electric shaver into that or charge up my laptop. So for the rear curtains, I fastened the edges of them up to the plastic trim with some screws. And along the top, I have a string. I had to drill little holes to lace it through. There's also pieces of Velcro up there so I can completely seal off the light. And there's also a string along the bottom that holds the, the curtains flush against the window so they're not hanging way out here against my face when I'm trying to sleep. And on the outside, it's this nice flat black material. And on the inside, it has a decorative pattern. So when I close up the curtains, they block out most of the sunlight. And I can have these interior lights on. And from the outside, you can't see anything at all. I work the night shift and sleep during the day. So when I close up all the curtains, it's like nighttime in here. I suspended the front curtains from some bicycle cable housing. I put a hook in the middle to hold it up against the ceiling. And it's the same design, black fabric on the outside, decorative on the inside. I close up like that and they Velcro together in the middle. This is my kitchen area and I just recently organized it a whole lot better so things are easier to find. There's some storage down there. I keep my utensils and water there, humidity gauge, carbon monoxide detector, keep my toothbrush and toothpaste over there. I just recently ordered a Hario V60 and a hand crank grinder, so I'm taking my coffee up to the next level. It's about the only cooking I do in here is boiling water for coffee. Back here so it shows the inside temperature and outside temperature, sensor outside battery voltage. I have a mirror. It's on a little swivel. Some lighting. I don't like using the interior lights because they're on a timer. They turn off after a while. So I don't cook meals in here, but I do eat most of my meals in here. 
I might go out once a week if I have a craving for something. But this time of year, it's cold outside, so the van is just like a refrigerator. I can keep things like yogurt, deli meats, lettuce, salsa, guacamole, and they won't go bad. But I make a lot of wraps. I also have some other things down here, peanut butter, some pizza bread, and jam, and honey. And for when summer comes back around, I have a cooler. There's a freezer at work, so I can freeze up the ice pack. I'm actually thinking I'm going to start using this for ice cream now. <laughs> Switch for the lighting. This is the Wave 3 propane heater that I've been using. And I don't use it a whole lot, 30 minutes at a time at the most. When I'm eating a meal or changing clothes, it just creates way too much moisture. I'm not crazy about that. But I've been on the same 10 pound tank for nearly three months now. Up here is just a jar full of cedar branches, kind of an air freshener, I guess. Extra storage on top, blanket, a slot for my laptop, a cubby for my folding bike. And down here, this is important. Well, it's my work boots, but uh, I have a vacuum. <laughs> you track a lot of dirt in here. So I think I've covered just about everything. If you have any questions, let me know. If you're thinking about moving into a minivan yourself, go for it. It's been enjoyable for me. I've been able to save a bit of money. But I think what's made it easier for me is that I work the night shift. So five nights a week, I have a safe place to park. And during the day, it's easy to find a spot within the city to have a sleep. Got about 10 different places that I rotate through and some of them even have Wi-Fi. But it's January, I'm just waiting for the cold weather to come and the snow. Uh, as far as I know, winter's cancelled, I'm not sure what's going on here. But uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens. But the cheapest apartments around here are still too expensive for me. Uh, I've been in the van almost 4 months now so that rent bill is starting to add up. And instead of ending up with nothing, I have a minivan that I can resell if I have to. But on the other hand, you don't really have the same peace of mind when you're living in a vehicle compared to renting an apartment. Uh, there's no real maintenance involved with an apartment. You can't drive an apartment into a deer and end up homeless. Um, and I'm not always certain where I'm going to sleep at night. So if you like adventure in your life, maybe living in a vehicle is for you. And you can save a little bit of money along the way. Uh, I hope I can talk about budget in the future and maybe in another video. But uh, I'll talk to you later.